Hello YouTube and welcome to the next video in the Route Learning series. On today's journey we're going to be travelling on the Just Trains Bishop Auckland to Darlington route from Bishop Auckland to Darlington and we will be calling at Shildon, Newton Aycliffe, Hayington, North Road and Darlington. The total distance for the journey is 11 and 3 quarter miles. This route is actually slightly old now, so unfortunately it's not up to modern standards. The graphics aren't as good as usual. And there is no super elevation on the curves at all. But I still think it's quite a good route and I wanted to cover it um, as part of my aim to cover every payware route that has been released for Train Simulator. This is the second video that I have now made using the class 142 pacer as the traction. When I was looking at timetables for journeys along this route I found that there's only about one train every two hours departing and arriving at Bishop Auckland and every train I looked at was a pacer which is why I'm using that. So it's in Northern Rail livery which I think looks really good on these. The Pacer was built by Brel Darby and Leyland Bus between 1985 and 1987. A total of 96 Class 142 Pacers were built and there are two cars per train with a total capacity of between 102 and 121 seats per train set. The maximum speed of this train is 75 miles per hour though we won't be able to get up to that on the journey today and the power output is 225 horsepower. Once inside the cab of the Pacer, if we just have a quick look around, we can see how detailed it is. This is actually the blue cab version from Northern Rail, so the first thing I'm going to do is open the windows. I've already turned on the tail lights at the back. Normally with this train you would have to go to the rear cab and turn on the tail lights, but I've done that already. So I'm now going to put the headlights on, put the train in forward and reset the AWS self-test sequence. I will now turn off the driver reminder appliance as you can see that the signal ahead is green. I'm going to turn on the instrument panel and destination lights. So you can see here in front of us we have the speedometer as the dial on the right and the dial on the left is the brake gauge. The Pacer has a standard West Code 3 step brake so we've got release position then 1, 2 and 3 which is full service and finally emergency. We also have a 7 step power controller. Departing Bishop Auckland, the starting speed limit is 20 miles per hour, and we've got around 3 miles to go to the next stop, which is Shildon. Now that we've reached 20 miles per hour, I've idled the power to allow the train to coast. The speed limit will shortly be going up to 45 miles per hour. now entering the 45 mile per hour speed zone and we can increase power straight away because the pacer takes a little while to respond once you've applied full power so by the time the train's actually in full power the rear of the train will have passed the speed board.
Now that we've reached 45 miles per hour, I've once again idled the power. If we do lose too much speed, I will then go into step 3 power just to bring us back up to 45. Unfortunately, there's no throttle position on this train that will maintain us at this speed, so we've got to mess around with the throttle just to try and stay around this speed. step 3 power just to bring us back up towards 45 miles per hour and as we reach 45 I will once again idle the power It appears that once again, like in the last video, I have a railworks bug coming up as we enter this tunnel. It looks like we're about to go through a hill. Unfortunately this happens sometimes in railworks and I'm never sure why. You may have noticed just before we entered the tunnel we passed a warning board for a 30 mile per hour speed limit. So I'm just going to allow the train to coast through this tunnel as the 30 mile per hour speed limit comes into force just after we leave this tunnel. As we reach the end of the tunnel I'm just going to apply brakes just to ensure that we've slowed down for the 30 mile per hour speed limit in time. I've now released the brakes and I will continue to allow the train to coast. We are doing now around 27-28 miles per hour. The station at Shildon is just coming up. There's no exact braking point here, so I just say brake at your discretion. Looks like I can see the platform on the opposite track coming up now. There is no clear stopping point here at Shildon, so I'm going to try and estimate where the train should stop. So I'm aiming to stop by this shelter that you can now see on the left. Departing Shildon, the starting speed limit is 30 miles per hour, and we've got around 2 miles to go to the next stop, which is Newton A Cliff. Once again, as we reach 30 miles per hour, I'm going to idle the power allow the train to coast. On our right now is actually a part of the National Railway Museum. The National Railway Museum is based in York but it has a secondary location here at Shildon and if you look to the right you can just see a class 37 
and a Deltic prototype was just next to that, though that was difficult to see. The speed limit is now going up to 45 miles per hour, so I'm going into full power. As we get to 45, I will idle the power and allow the train to coast. Idling the power at 45 miles per hour. There will shortly be a reduction in speed to 30 miles per hour as we get towards the next station. a Morpeth Ward warning us of the reduction in speed to 30 miles per hour. So I'm now going to apply step one braking to slow us down gently. I braked slightly too early there can now see the 30 mile per hour speed board just coming up and then you can see our next station coming up just after that. Once again here at Newton Aycliffe I would say break at your discretion as you can see the station Again there is no clear stopping point here so I'm going to aim to stop just before the footbridge at the end of the platform here. As we get to the information board there that's about the right place. Starting Newton Aycliffe, the starting speed limit is still 30 miles per hour and we've got around one and a third miles to go to the next stop which is Hayington. Once again as we get to 30 miles per hour, we're going to idle the power and allow the train to coast until the speed limit goes back up to 45 miles per hour. See the speed limit is now going back up to 45 miles per hour, so I'm going back into full power.
miles per hour, I'm idling the power and you can just about see the platforms of our next stop coming up in the distance once again there's no clear braking point so I'll generally say brake at your discretion because you can see the station and you're going slow enough to be able to stop when you can see it Here at Hayington we're going to stop right at the end of the platform I'm now applying the brakes to slow down and going up to step 2 I'll try and enter the station at no faster than about 20 to 25 miles per hour As you can see the platform here is fairly short so we want to stop at the end close to the crossing Starting Hayington, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour and we've got just over 4 miles to go to the next stop which is North Road. As we reach 30 miles per hour I'm now going to idle the power as the speed limit will shortly be going down to 25. So I'm just going to apply step 1 braking now to bring us down to 25 miles per hour. And here we'll be crossing the point to the right, as you can see with the signal with the feather indicator on top illuminated. And we'll be on a single track section for a little while as we head towards North Road. Now that we're on the single track section, the speed limit has gone back up to 45 miles per hour, so I'm going to go back into full power. Once again as we've reached 45 miles per hour I've idled the power to allow the train to coast and if we do lose enough speed to drop to say 42-43 miles per hour I will then go back into step 3 power just to bring us back up to 45 again and then just keep repeating the process to keep us at around this speed. just reapplied power as I felt we were losing a little bit too much speed there you can see we're now quickly climbing back up to 45 
And now that we're at 45, I'm idling the power again. As we approach the signal coming up just ahead, we're then around half a mile from our stop at North Road. There will shortly be a speed reduction down to 20 miles per hour. And we're going to break for that on some points that we're going to cross just coming up. So here's the Morpeth board for the 20 mile per hour speed limit. Now as we reach these points, I'm breaking up to step two. I accidentally went into step three for a second there. To slow down for the 20 mile per hour speed limit coming up. You can see the 20 mile per hour speed board now, so we slowed down about right. And you can also now see the station at North Road. We have to stop right at the end of the platform, in fact it appears that this end of the platform is closed off and fenced off, so trains only use the far end of the platform which is quite short. Starting from North Road, the starting speed limit is still 20 miles per hour, and we've got around one and a quarter miles to go to our final stop, which is Darlington. So now that we've reached 20 miles per hour, I've idled the power to allow the train to coast. The speed limit will shortly be going up to 35, but then quickly down to 25. 
So as we pass the 35 board, I will go into full power briefly, but I will idle the power again at just over 25 miles per hour. So here's the 35 mile per hour speed board and straight after it a Morpeth board warning us of a 25 speed limit. So I'll briefly go into full power and you can just see the 25 mile per hour speed board coming up ahead. I will now idle the power. I've just given it briefly one step of brake just to make sure that we're doing 25. As we round this curve to the right, we will be joining the East Coast Main Line, which is the main route from London King's Cross to Leeds, Newcastle and Edinburgh, as well as services to Glasgow and Hull and other places. And you will have seen me cover this little bit of route if you've watched my York to Newcastle route learning video. You can now see the overhead wires of the East Coast Main Line. And the speed limit will shortly be going up to 50 miles per hour, however we won't get the opportunity to get up to that before we need to slow down. For some reason it's not marked by speed boards, but the speed limit is going up to 50 miles per hour before the 50 limit you can see just ahead. So the speed board's in a slightly wrong place. You just saw we had a warning for a speed reduction down to 40. However, I still think that 40 is too fast as we enter Darlington. You can see the station coming up now. So I'm going to idle the power here at around 35 miles per hour. And I will slow down to around 25 for when we enter the station itself. Now entering the 40 mile per hour speed zone, so I'm now going to apply the brakes to bring us down to around 25. In fact, slightly more than that, I brought us down to around 20. We're now entering Darlington Station. There's no clear stopping point here, and the platform is very long in relation to the length of this train, which is very short. So I'm going to aim to stop here next to the news agents which is just a little bit further up and just hope that that's the right place you can now see the news agents on the right so I'm going to try and stop just around here Thank you for watching and I really hope that you've enjoyed the video. There will actually be technically a part 2 to this, although it's not labelled as such. I am going to do the journey from Darlington to Middlesbrough, as that route now has scenery on the upgraded East Coast Main Line. So that should be released hopefully within the next couple of days. Again, the journey will be in a pacer, as that seems to be the most common route along uh, sorry, the most common train along that route. Again, thanks for watching.